Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Ovicast, the Chugger Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring us insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. One of the first parasite challenges young lambs will face is that of coccidiosis. I'm joined by Michael Gossin, head sheep in Chagosk, who will describe the condition to us and how it actually affects the lamb. Michael will outline the various symptoms we need to look out for, how we might go about reducing the environmental challenge, particularly for later lamb or younger lambs within our flock, and ultimately he will discuss a number of treatment options available for this particular condition. Michael, as we enter the early part of the grazing season, parasites become a problem again for lambs. I suppose the first one we hit in the grazing year is coccidiosis. I know it can sometimes be foreign specific. Maybe it'll take us through what it is first and some of the symptoms. Okay, yeah. So, Kieran, coccidiosis is called by, caused by a tiny little parasite. Um, it's an emeria parasite. Um, causes coccidiosis. It's, it's very species specific. So the coccidia that affects sheep doesn't affect cattle um, or or poultry. Um, and there's lots of different um, species of Emeria. And even in sheep, we see lots of different species of, of these coccidia bugs. And some of them cause disease and some of them don't. There's two that cause disease. And I suppose those are the ones that we, we see in lambs or we notice in lambs simply because the lambs get very, very sick. Um, they start scouring really badly. Um, it's it's a blood stained, really dark scour, um, and if they're not treated in in, in their severe infections, it, it it can lead to death or lambs that are going to be very badly damaged. Um, their intestines will be badly damaged, and they they'll never thrive afterwards. So I suppose that's the the background to the disease. It's a disease that is spread by the sheep, the older sheep, into the environment. Um, and it, it needs water, really, or damp conditions for, for the, the, the little oocysts once they hatch for the, 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 the parasite to, to, to swim and, and to, to, to work its way into the food chain. So certainly in lambs that have been housed for a long time around feeder is a potential risk point for its soul. Absolutely. So, I mean, in, in, in terms of, of trying to reduce the challenge, um, to the, the lambs. So when the lambs are born, um, they have immunity, they get a bit of immunity from the, the colostrum, from their mother, and that lasts for about two, two weeks, two, three weeks. Um, and then they, they basically become susceptible and they pick up these oocysts, or, or these uh, infected coccidia um, from the oocysts that have been passed out on the pasture or in the sheds. Um, so they hatch and, and these infected larvae basically are eaten by the lambs and they attack uh, the digestive system. Um, and very much, I suppose, it's, it's, a, it's a high, what we need to try and do is, is prevent it as much as we can, um, reduce the challenge by, you know, uh, adopting hygiene. So in terms of hygiene, when it comes to coccidia, it's a dry bed, um, preventing animals from defecating into to feeders, into feeding trucks, keeping the water trucks high so that they don't don't want to defecate into those. Um, outdoors, if it's outdoors, moving the feeders regularly, keeping the feeders away from the water trucks, um, keeping the areas around the water trucks relatively dry um, by basically having maybe gravel um, so that it's not mucky and dirty, raising the feeding trucks and the feeders up off the ground. Um, so that, that there's less dirt and less chance of animals defecating into them. So that, that's, I suppose, the, the, the main way of, of, of um, trying to keep the parasite challenge low. The second point just to remember is that lambs are the real heavy shedders of it um, because adult sheep are, are, are immune to it, um, even though they will shed certain amounts of it. So grazing younger lambs after older lambs is very high risk because the older lambs will be passing out lots of, of oocysts, which will hatch and they'll infect the younger lambs. Generally, once the lambs hit about 10, 8 to 10 weeks of age, they become immune again, unless now that they're subsequently stressed or, 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 or have some underlying health issues that cause them, causes their immune system to, to, to basically break down. But by and large, we see it in lambs from about 3 to 4 weeks of age until they're about 10 weeks of age. And just when we're on that, Michael, in terms of the symptoms, you mentioned not all types of coccidia are um, 
harmful to lambs. So a faecal egg test isn't really useful. You're more dependent on the physical signs and farm history. Absolutely. So we, we have two types of parasites in the springtime. We have nematovirus and coccidia. Very often they, they come at the same time and they have similar symptoms. Um, and for both of those, actually, egg counts are, are of very little use. Um, and with the coccidia, the issue is that we can do an oocyst count and it can come back as, you know, low, medium or high. But it, it, not, it might not necessarily be uh, from an coccidia species that is causing disease. So you can have lambs with a very high oocyst count for coccidia. And those eggs can be com- prom- predominantly coming from coccidia species that don't cause disease. Non-pathogenic, side, yeah. yeah, non-pathogenic ones. And the flip side of that coin is that you can have a very low egg count, but they can all be from the two species that cause disease, and you could have lambs that are very, very sick. So in general, what we're saying is is when you see the lambs and they're scouring and straining, um, you know, then it's time to go in and treat um, for coccidia. Okay. Just in terms of treatment, what options are out there? Yeah, so in in terms of of, of treatment, we've we've got a number of drugs um, on the market. Now, they all come from the same kind of family of of drugs. So we have um, the tultrasurals, which are basically um, things like bovicox and baycox, and there's lots of different um, ones on the market. And those are uh, basically have an action where they kill all of, of the coccidia that are in the digestive tract. So they kill everything from from larvae that were taken in yesterday to larvae that have matured and are adults and are laying eggs. Um, that Those products um, have a 42-day withdrawal period, um, and, they're, and they're generally only recommended for, for relatively young lambs under 20 kilos. The second type product is, is, is probably one of the initial ones that was around it. It's, it's a uh, diclozural. It's, it's the coxin it's known as. Um, that basically is from the same family, but it's not as effective against the earlier stages of the larvae. So it only kills coccidia species that are about 16 days old inside the lambs. Um, it has a zero day withdrawal period, so it's, it, it's a little bit easier, I suppose, if it's being used in heavier or older lambs closer to the time when, when they're ready to go for slaughter. Um, and generally with that particular product in heavy infections, uh, or heavy challenge areas, you may need to go twice. And then the third option for for um, controlling coccidia is decox medicated feed. So that's basically where you get your feed manufacturer, somebody who is licensed to, to sell those types of products, uh, medicated feed, to put this medicine called decox into the ration. And generally, we'd be putting in somewhere between one and a half and two and a half kilograms of this decox per ton of feed into it. And if the lambs are being fed, creep fed, um, they need to take in somewhere between, you know, 75 and 100 grams a day of creep feed to be getting, um, sorry, 75 to 100 grams per, per 10 kgs live weight. Um, so most lambs, if they're being creep fed, will achieve that kind of an intake by four to five weeks of age, which is usually when we start seeing the first coccidia outbreak okay okay um like there is a long-term cost in terms of performance and animal health of this so it is something you need to be very much on guard for at the moment there is a long-term damage as a result of a clinical infection yeah so i mean the the, the one issue with with Severe coccidia infections is that you will have a number of, or if, especially if it's not treated uh, very, very quickly, you'll have a number of lambs that may die, and you have a number of lambs that are really badly uh, damaged. You know, maybe the treatment will will save them in terms of, of that they won't die, but they'll have a, have a lot of damage done to their digestive tract and will subsequently, you know, be very poor drivers. So on farms that have a history of coccidia very often, um, the farmers will go in at maybe four or five weeks of age with the treatment because they know it's coming um, when they see the, the, the first uh, lamb scouring. Now, look at, I suppose, for some farmers who are not sure whether they have coccidia, uh, the advice is that when you see your first lamb scouring, um, go in with your nematodirus drench first, which is your white drench, because that's very cheap. Um, and if the lambs don't dry up after a day or two, um, then you go in with your coccidia treatment. 
because okay. it, it can be very difficult to distinguish between the two parasites and because the two parasites happen at the same time in the lamb's life cycle. Very often the two parasites are coming in almost together. Okay. Some very valuable points again. Some will be very vigilant for at the moment. Michael, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. We're going to finish up at this point. Again, coccidiosis is one of the health challenges young lambs will face at this time of the season. Again, Michael outlined the very symptoms we need to look out for. Use that along with farm history to make your treatment decisions. He also outlined a number of different treatment options available. Coccidiosis is something that will have a big impact on lamb health. It also has an impact on subsequent lamb performance because of the potential damage it can do to the gut. So it is one of them conditions that needs prompt treatment. That's it for this episode. For any other updates in the sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chago Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to future episodes.